Every year, I head to Michigan's Upper Peninsula for Thanksgiving Deer Camp. The UP of Michigan contains vast chunks of huntable federal, state, and private ground. But between the winters, wolves, and aging habitat, it's hard to find the deer. Relying heavily on snow to track, this year was setting up to be another tough one. For the first few days, I cover miles looking for fresh feeding or rut sign. I stop to call when I think I'm close. Wait, and then press on. A decent one right there, not far off the road. The challenge seems to be insurmountable. Until the evening of day two, when our camp finally catches a break. Hello. Uh, well, it's Kenny over at the Y101 Pepsi Deer Hunters Roundup. I hope you're having a good evening. Well, first and foremost, did you, did you, did you get anything on the, the scale that you need, need to report? We had one person this morning. Okay, good. Right. His name is Russ Batzer. He okay. had a 150-pound seven-point buck. That's out of Cisco Kid Deer Camp. Woo! New guy broke the five-year drought. Oh, there you go. <laughs> With confidence renewed that the unlikely can happen, I head back out into the wilderness for the last few days of the hunt. Doe blowing. Jumped her up. It's really good feeding sign. Right back at the parking lot. I'm not very far off of it right now. And it gets thick right here, so definitely a good spot for a doe to bed. It's also a good spot for a buck to come in and check. After bumping the doe, I find an area with scattered oak trees, but only a few have dropped acorns this year. But with at least one doe in the area, it's worth my time to hunt slowly, glassing, and calling as I go. Later in the day, I decide to change elevations. I climb up a ridge and immediately find fresh acorns and feeding sites. Well, it's a couple hours still evening, and I finally found some good acorns right up on top of this ridge. I'm going to set up here and hopefully one comes in. Well, I got about 45 minutes till dark. I'm gonna start walking out of here. I got just under a mile to get out. Start slow at first and then as it gets dark, I'll probably pick up the pace. And nothing today. The next day I head to a new oak ridge that is at a similar elevation to the previous evening and immediately find loads of acorns inside pretty good oak flat right off the road. There's some fresh acorns feeding side here. There's also a wolf side out of the road. So I know they've been through here, but you find the deer, you find the wolves. They know where they're at. Found a scrape tree. There's four scrapes underneath. 
not very far off the road. Three, four hundred yards maybe. Lots of acorns. Some deer sign. Bear sign. Wolf sign. Should be in within the area. Fifty yards from the scrape tree, I find two fresh rubs on top of a small ridge. Those are fresh. After a couple hours with no deer sightings, I grab my gear and slowly work my way over to the edge of a hemlock thicket. I think I found a decent spot to set up until dark. I just moved maybe a hundred yards from where I did that rattling session. And there's a pretty good conifer edge here. So I got the sign behind me and potential deer bedding in front of me. The wind in my face or on my side. So I think if there is a deer here, there's a chance that they'll come out and work up towards those acorns and that hill and maybe those scrapes uh, before dark. Just trying to play the patient game. It's cold though, so I gotta bundle up and try to stay warm. Sitting alone in the silence of the big woods leaves a lot of room for internal struggle. And again, I find the end of my patience after a few hours. I'm getting antsy. I'm feeling guilty for not watching that scrape tree. I feel like I'm missing out by not being up on top watching maybe both. I sneak back to the top of the small ridge, glass until dark, without seeing a deer. Knowing I finally found the spot I've been looking for, I head back to the Acorn Ridge the next day. I'm in the same area I was yesterday. I circled wide in that scrape tree and I found another scrape here. I would say it's older, but this licking branch is way up high. Seems like a pretty good buck to make that. I'm going to blow on the ground too a little bit, just in case. I get through the open timber to where there are more terrain features and pockets of cover for deer to bed. Then I slow down and start glassing, only moving when the wind picks up to mask my sound. I work my way around this hill real slow, using the wind to move. When I got around to the end of it here, I noticed some pretty good cover on the opposite hillside. It's a couple hundred yards over there. So I just worked my way quietly, slowly to the edge, found a tree to sit against. 
I'll just do a little bit of calling. So if there's anything bedded up there, maybe it'll just come to the edge to check it out. It also seems like maybe a good spot for a buck to cruise through, check for doe trails from the acorns south of me to maybe this cover. It's just a theory at this point. After the calling sequence, I sat for almost an hour, fighting the urge to flush the cover. But an hour is all I can take. Time to move. I'm going to work my way kind of to the east end of this and then push through that cover see what kind of signs in there as I move toward the thick hillside I can't shake the feeling that a deer should be there I glass again and it pays off with antlers shining in the sun I need the buck to stand up out of his bed to give me a clear shot through a narrow gap in the trees. As I look through the scope, I realize that when he stands up, his vitals will be covered by brush. I gamble and decide to shift my position while the buck is relaxed and looking away. Ten yards is all it takes to get a clear view. In the process, the blood rushes back to my frozen fingers and causes an intense burning. Oh man, my fingers are killing me. It's rough, but these opportunities are rare, and I'm not going to blow it. At this point, it's been one and a half hours since I first saw the buck. Patience, patience, patience. All I can do is keep my head in the game and wait him out. After one hour and 45 minutes, my patience finally pays off and the buck stands up. It's quarter and two. That's a really hard quarter. Dusted him. Tipped right over. 
tipped right over. I seen the blood dripping down the side. Yeah, oh yeah, he did. That took a while. Holy shit. Oh, what time is it? Oh, he's not dead. He's not dead. He's not dead. All right, I lost you. Sorry. I thought he tipped over, but he stood back up and he come hurt real bad and I shot again and I could see him go down I seen his head up and then it went down so I'm not sure if he's alive or dead right now I'm gonna creep up there and see if I can get one in him again dead buck oh. oh my god this is such hard hunting oh I can't believe I glassed him up in his bedroom I freaking knew they would be in there I knew it god I'm so glad I took it slow I thought he was going to be smaller than that. Yes! Mm. Huh. What a great last day buck. This is such hard hunting here. You got to always be in the game and that is extremely hard to do. And I just got so lucky I spotted him. I'm pumped. That just came together so perfect. I'm going to get him taken care of, and then we can drag him out of here. Almost there. We got about 150 more yards of the road. I'm gonna make it before the sun goes down. I can see it. There's the road. Ah, oh, made it. Whew. A couple more yards. What a beautiful sight, man. What a beautiful day. 24th of November. Whew. Ah, this country seems harsh and cold until you get a buck on the ground. Then it all seems wonderful. That's amazing. That was about as flat and as level as you could ask for in this country. I just followed the top of the line, almost a straight line, and I'm not far from the truck. You just can't ask for much more than that. What a beautiful sight. Beautiful country. Big Woods Buck in about the biggest country that Michigan has to offer. Porcupine Mountains Wilderness Area. This place is tough. You earn them here, no doubt about it. But, used my binos, took it slow, 
happen to pay off. That is a wonderful thing to happen right there. In our constant search for tomorrow, we often lose our way. The wilderness consumes us, and we forget the words to say. But upon the twilight of our heart, as our beards turn to gray, we realize the time we spend together far outweighs the prey. <laughs>